We are live. We have Jim and Martina, Swedish painters, uh, owners, and founders of Visano Design. It's so yes. nice to meet you today. Nice to meet you too. I love what you put up on YouTube recently, always sharing value. And I like that video about storytelling. It has really changed our way of thinking of how to put up our videos and stuff. And I'm actually also starting, I signed a contract today to be a manager slash mentor for a guy. Congratulations. That's amazing. We, we will use those kind of storytelling techniques in, in his content as well. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And you're going to put up that paywall soon because you're sharing too much value. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad that we're able to talk today because I do believe that when we change our story, we change our life. And that that change internally can happen in an instant. We just have to have the faith to be patient and let the, the outer changes manifest uh, when they do. And sometimes that, that can take a few months, but that's really not that long. And you and Martina have exemplified how quickly just a shift in mindset and a belief can can manifest the success. Some people wait to see the success before they believe in it. But would you say it's like you you believed in it and and then you were able to see it as opposed to waiting to see it to actually believe it? We were very lucky we lost our jobs at the same time, <laughs> but I, I I've been reflecting a lot. During this summer, I had a lot of time. I was journaling. I was working on our brands, uh, my own brand. I have my own Instagram and I have my Fasano Instagram. And I was really reflecting about my life and you know all the faces and strong moments and key points that changed my life. And I've always been interested about design and you know designing people's faces. I remember when I was really young, I got my own room. I was sharing my room with, with my brother when I was really small. And then my older siblings, they moved out and I got this room. And I remember I was really excited about designing the room. And I'm Swedish and we have, the, we have IKEA. And everybody has IKEA furniture in Sweden. And at that time, they sent out this big uh, catalog of all the furniture and advertisement for their products and those were like the, the, the prettiest things you can mm. see back back then mm. internet was not a thing back then and the ikea catalog was the was the shit that was where you found your inspiration for your home in sweden awesome. at least and i we got that in the mail and i remember i i flipped the pages and i i thought like i want I, wa I want my room to look like this this is my dream. So I started planning. I was, you know, planning the what desk to have and uh, also like paintings or decorations and stuff. And I was really excited about that. And I remember also relatives, they were uh, amazed about my interest about this to, to make my, my room really pretty. <laughs> and uh, I did what I could. My, my parents supported me in that, but after that, uh, I, I kind of left that, that side of, uh, to the side. And there's another story that I really recall when I did this journaling because my parents are engineers and they are really successful. They have their own companies. And at the time we have like high school and then you go some, to something called gymnasium. And that's where you kind of make your choice about what you guys call majors. Mm. And... Uh, I wanted to, I actually remember this, this moment I sat in the sofa and they were like asking me what, what I wanted to do. And I wanted to, to pick the arts. But uh, in, in the back of my head, I, I, I heard a voice say, like, only poor people do arts. You should be an engineer like your parents. So I, I remember that point and uh, I, I, I kind of walked their path. But I always had this arts and music and... I've always been interested about those kind of things. 
and kind of been doing my best to to do those things on the side while being this engineer and while being successful, what I thought was successful. So how it's always did, been. How long did it take you to trust yourself and go for it, go for art? Uh, it took like um, when I when I was after that point in the sofa that I was talking about my my little brother he was he started to taking guitar lessons. And I was really excited about that. I, I didn't have the courage to do it myself, but I saw his, I saw him playing, and I, I kind of wanted to to learn as well. So I, I heard what he did, and I looked at the notes and the chords, and I, you know, started trying to fiddle around. And then I, I kind of played more and more and more, and you know, I played four hours every day, five hours, and so it was guitar first. It was the design thing when I was really small, but then it was guitar. And uh, it's always been a, an interest, but you know, I always thought that was just a an hobby and not not a career. And I wanted it to be a, a career, but in the back of my mind, it, like arts are for poor people. And I actually, I have artists in my family. My my aunt is an art artist, and she always had you know the old car, you know, coming black smoke from the exhaust, and so that that was like a bad example. Like I, I don't want to end up like like her, so I better do this serious art and math, uh, uh, mathematics and engineering stuff. Uh, but then also when I went to Australia, I I I, I kind of for a while I wanted to walk in their shoes, but then I. I remade that choice and I thought, I'm going to travel. I, I traveled to India, I traveled to South, Southern Eastern Asia, and I went to Australia. And I bought a guitar in, in Australia, in Sydney. Mm -hmm. And uh, we traveled and I you know, wrote, wrote my own songs and, and stuff. I had a friend who helped me. And then when we came to the, the end of the trip, kind of, you go the East Coast, you, you land in Sydney, and then you go up East to, to Cairns. It's the, northern town of Australia for, for like backpackers and travelers. So I went there and I actually met a guy who was playing guitar on the streets. I saw him like every night. And all my friends were going home from, this was like the end point of the travels. But I wasn't, uh, my adventure wasn't over yet. So I actually started talking to him and he was Swedish as well. And I looked down in his guitar case and I saw he made a lot of money. So. I thought, like, why not, uh, why not join him? So we kind of started a band together, him, him and me. And we played every night. It was like a crossing of a bar street and McDonald's. So everybody was drunk and, and happy. And they, they, they gave us a lot of money. We made like two, three hundred dollars each per night. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the coins in Australia are this, kind of the smallest coins that you, you find are one dollar coins. So when people open their wallets, it was like, yeah, five, six dollars at least they emptied out. It, for them, it was like coins, but it, it's, it, it was money. So yeah. we earned a lot of, from that. And we, we actually bought more equipment. We, we bought like speakers and we had two microphones and two guitars. And we did that for, for one full year. And uh, so arts and music and, and everything related to arts has always been very fond of me, but uh, it's been like the money thing. When I came home, I did like one year of music production and then my parents were really nice and they allowed me to, to study or, or to like practice what I, what I learned and to put up songs. I made like five, five songs and put, put them out, but it wasn't giving me any money. So after a while, I kind of fell back into their, their steps and applied for university. They asked me like, please Jim, can you try university? <laughs> so I, after a while I, I did that and I started to study. And also during that time, the first time was really hard. So I had to study all the time. But then I found some people that also did music and we started recording songs in my like student dorm. Mm. And we actually had a quite successful band. Me, I met Martina because we were playing festivals around the, the, the country. And we met, I met her in a, in a, awesome. on a festival, actually. Uh, and then I remember when we were like in the studio, 
me and my friends and just in the back of my head because we were kind of speeding up. It, uh, the, the, it was not so happy anymore kind of in the, in the band. <laughs> so, and I remember in the back of my head, I thought like, maybe if I could paint, that would be awesome to just paint and be creative. And that would be awesome to just do that. But then again, you know, money calls and I started this career as a project manager and kind of that dream got lost. But then I, I lost my job and at the same time as Martina and we thought like, like let's give this a shot. It wasn't really yeah. serious in the beginning. We were just like painting and then I thought this is kind of, I'm kind of good and I did another one and I, I didn't really have a, have a goal with it but also we had been discussing, me and Martina, we wanted to be kind of financially free and to be able to travel around. She had this dream of having this van and just, you know, traveling mm -hmm. around. And I thought actually doing like art prints. I had several ideas. So I, for, for, a time, for a while I did like Nordic animals and I put them on Etsy store. And I did, did this uh, street art company because I was... Uh, in between all these periods, I've been into graffiti also, uh, back right. and forth. So I started this uh, street, art, street art company, which was art with like streets or graffiti elements to it. But no one bought though anything. I guess we had to work on the, the marketing. Mm -hmm. Same thing with both the music and the marketing. We Everything kind of... Uh, you have to market a lot. When you are a musician, you want to do music. You don't, you know, put enough into marketing. And also with art, you thought, I'm going to be, I'm the best artist. This is the best picture. Everybody's going to buy it. And that's kind of where we understood with the sound that we had to do something different. Right. Well, if I had to guess how you've been able to achieve so much success so fast, going from laid off to now you're, you know, selling art and, you know, you just signed this contract, I would guess your success has come from implementing the information you've learned quickly. Exactly. I learned uh, this phrase, fail forward. You have to take all the failures that you have in your backpack and kind of take them out and look at them and see, like, what did I do wrong here? Uh, what can I do better? Better. Yeah. And for Vasano, it's been the marketing, you know, I understood like with, with our pictures that you can see in the, in the back here, if you just put it in like a nice room, everything changes. Or if you just put it in a nice frame, everything changes. And it's just how you frame everything. And I guess it's the same thing with music. It's how, how people perceive the, what you do. Uh, I saw some kind of Facebook post where they put like a child's picture in a really nice frame and it looks like a masterpiece and something right. like really serious. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a lot about the marketing part, in my opinion. And, and that's interesting because you've, you've allowed yourself to frame your own life. A lot of people let their environment and the people around them make decisions for them and they let life happen to them so it seems like you've been able to to avoid that by um quote unquote framing the reality that you want and then taking action yes we started with i started with personal development like 2012 i remember when i started with that it was the friend who i was in australia with he was like introducing it mm -hmm. to me and he it was, it was 2011 going to 2012, and, you know, it was this thing about uh, the, end, the, the end of the world. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I read books, and uh, I, I, I went into personal development and, you know, setting goals and kind of seeing a picture in your mind or kind of fantasizing. I've always been kind of fantasizing about what could be, and I think that's the key, and, and setting goals, and that's a really part of, big part of what, what we do now. We are setting big goals. We are repeating them. We're reading them every day. We have a very special morning routine where we go over our goals every day and we visualize our goals and we work with goals. And in the beginning, it was not really serious, but now we're taking it really serious and we're, we're seeing what's happening. And 
when we're building our stuff brick by brick, a lot of opportunities come by, like this music amazing. thing that's coming up now. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. It's um, when you talk about setting goals and having a vision for your personal development as well as your business, it sounds like the more you work on yourself, the better your business gets. The more you learn about business, the more you level up in your personal life. Yeah, something for me that I learned from another mentor, because I I started to getting mentors now this year. I have this guy, Paul Bryson. He, learned, he taught me about the body. If you master the body, you can master your mind. Mm -hmm. And that was really big for me. I didn't understand, you know, in Sweden, we have a lot of mental health issues and people, the, the doctors say like, you have to work out, you have to train. And I did that for some times, but I didn't feel that much more happy. But now we have this routine where we work out every day. I haven't missed a day since March. Even if I've been sick, even if I've not been feeling it, it's about building that discipline muscle. Yeah. And working out every day and, and setting goals and doing brick by brick, small things every day. And nothing great is built, you know, fast. You have to build every day and don't expect too much in results. Just, you know, focus on the process. That's something that we learned recently, not to focus on the, on the results too much. Focus on the process to do the best you can do at that moment. If you do that and time pass by, you'll have success. Yes. And I like what you said earlier about in the beginning, you and Martina didn't have this fixed goal you were moving towards, but you had a vision. So so the vision, um, ha having kind of like this loose, the uh, uh, loose goals centered around a committed understanding of what you were moving towards. And that sounds to me like a really healthy, practical way to tackle uh, a big goal. Exactly. Yeah, we, we had this dream or goal to to be able to be working wherever we want. Mm. And in, in what shape or form, I'm still open to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually applied for something today that that's not, it's directly, it's uh, linked to creative work, but it's not really, it related to exactly what, what the sauna does, but it, it, it will allow me to be even more free. It's oh, yes. it, I can use that, you know, economic leverage to to use for more marketing and you know to to, to make me even more free. But yeah, the vision is to be to be free, to be financially free, to be able to work wherever with painting. You can also mm. I can go to Bali, I can buy a canvas, I can buy buy paint there. We've been I've been planning in my head like I, I I will have an extra suitcase with just paint and brushes and then I just have Beautiful, to buy yeah. the the canvas <laughs> wherever I am. And it's possible and uh, especially if you have a, a ba basis, if you have like money to, to, to right. start. Right. Yeah that's that's definitely the goal. I would say that that's my number one value is freedom, the freedom to travel, the the financial freedom. And I believe a lot of people that um, are attracted to this community here on school, that's that's what we're all going towards. And and that brings up another good point. If you know what your values actually are, you can make the right decisions and move towards a life that's going to satisfy you as opposed to letting your environment pick for you and then you're you're confused you know you get the 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 job or the degree or the accolades but something inside just isn't satisfied or it just doesn't feel right and that's because you've made decisions based on someone else's values you don't even know your own values um but it, it's just amazing to see uh your success and how things are just coming together and you you and martina clearly have that clarity a vision. I want to talk about journaling because I know that has really been a game changer for me, especially in the last 12 months or so. What what can you say about your your journaling practice? I think you should sit down for for a couple, couple of hours and a couple of days and just, you know, map out your life like like wow. I did the key okay. point, key moments in my life where 
where I have certain thoughts or where I had thoughts, where I, you know, took certain, certain directions and, you know, just map it out. I, I divided it until, you know, portions that I thought was reasonable, like uh, one, two, six, uh, six to 12, like key, key uh, eras in your life and thought like, what, 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 what was I really interested in? Mm. And what, what did I want and why? And that's what's interesting. And mm. when I look back, it's, it's always been like a red, red thread or something, you know, art have, has always been my biggest interest, but I, I just didn't know how to pursue it. And from my environment, it was not really accepted to be an artist or, you know, to, to put all your effort into, into art because it was not going to give you any money. But now it's, it's also changed in the, the art business because uh, back in the day you, you, were, you were a painter and you had a gallery and you, you know, had one or two, three exhibitions per year and uh, the gallery owner was promoting you and you were reliant on them hiring you or, you know, putting up exhibitions for you and promoting you. Today, I think everything changed. And it's the same with music and record labels. Mm. Back in the day, they were doing the marketing. They were kind of discovering you. They were doing the investment. But in music, you can buy a, a professional studio for like a thousand bucks. And uh, you can start your own Instagram page for free. And you can start doing art and do whatever you want. And you can reach people, actually. You're not reliant on someone else. You're only reliant on your own creativity and the tools that are available now. Do you do you think um, it was journaling and really committing to sitting down and looking over your life? Do you think that's what helped you shift from? You know, I, I don't. I'm. I'm not going to go for it. I don't know how to make money. To I mean, what did you say? Did you just say we're going for it? The, we're gonna figure this out. What 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 did that look like? I've I've been doing a lot of works uh, or jobs like, but I've always been bored at jobs. <laughs> but it was during the summer. This summer, I sat down. I was I was doing kind of a course on on personal branding, and they 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 asked me to to map out my values and. Mm -hmm. and think about it was it was like the course said like you should be authentic and you should you know find out who you are and what you want and i've always been bored at you know the the works the, the jobs i've been doing and creative creativity is nothing that tires me or, or you can always you know switch it up or do something new with that so i just reflected back and introspected and thought like this is actually something I don't get bored of and this is something if possible and like when I find a way would, would rather do and I think it's possible I've seen other do it do it I just have to you know find out how, how they did it and yeah it was I kind of remember when I when I wrote this journal this summer I, I found this red, red thread that I've always been interested about designing. I've always been interested about art and music. So why not just try it? And I'm still young. I'm, I'm 33 years old. And me and Martina, we don't have kids. And that's also a conscious choice. We want to, you know, expand and see see what's possible. If we get kids, we, we have to get a house. We have to get a lot of stuff that will hinder those, hinder us in that path and will take a lot of time. So we we rather you know spend some 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 weeks or years working a lot now and then be more free and maybe I see some some people who are famous artists they have like a whole team they just say like yeah, I want this paint to be painted or I want this sculpture and the team does it so if you put yourself in that kind of position it's also with a regular company if you build a company for a couple of years you can just sit at the beach drinking pina coladas and just tell the team what to, what to do and the employees and that's the situation we're trying to get into but I'm always going to be involved in the creative part but be able to to you know let other people help you that would be helpful because now that's a downside too with with the internet and Instagram you have to be able to know a lot you have to be mark like I said you have to be the expert expert painter you have to be an expert marketer. You have to be 
Uh, you can make your own website. There's a lot of roles you have to fill. I'm sure So you're that delegating those roles to to other people as you add to your team. Uh, it'll be yeah. amazing to see what you're doing six months from now. Mm hmm Exactly. Like uh, yeah. We we also use like AI for for like product descriptions and stuff like that. That speed is, speeds up the pro the process a lot. That's like an like having an an, an an employee, but Right. we're hoping to expand that even more. Yeah, so you um you've you've been investing in yourself through coaching and studying business, studying people doing what you want to be doing, and you've also been investing in the technology, learning about AI, how it can, you know, work as a virtual assistant for you. Yeah, exactly. I it started with this guy, Jim Rohn. I don't know if you know who, who that I don't guy know. is, but I, I listened to his speeches like every day for many, many months. And that's like, if you open up, we open ourselves up to change because we were like uh, not alcoholics and drug addicts, but you know, yeah, we were drinking every day, we were smoking weed every day, but we thought we, we wanted to change for years. It was like many years, me and Martina, we thought we got to stop smoking. We were just yeah. wasting Life. But that's something that I've noticed in my life. That something that I've had in my back, in the back of my mind for a long time. That after a while, it kind of manifests. Mm. Some things that I wrote down, I, I found some things that I wrote down, uh, like a whiteboard. We have a right whiteboard at home. I wrote down like goals, meditation, and visualization, and it stood on that whiteboard for like three years without us actually doing it. But now we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well the great thing about you know stopping smoking and drinking is all of a sudden it's it's a lot uh easier to get bored whereas before you just you know stay stoned uh it's like you know you can you're complacent so so boredom can really help you uh get moving and taking action <laughs> exactly and the, the throat and everything it's just disgusting after after years of smoking every day it's Mm -hmm. You get tired of it. Yeah, for that, sure. That's also something that I, I thought uh, when I was younger. I thought, like, I'm going to get bored of it. I'm going to get bored of smoking. But then, you know, so many years passed. And uh, yeah, every year, like, New Year's resolution, me and Martina thought, like, we're going to stop smoking this soon. But something that I learned recently, you're, you're not doing anything that you don't think help you. And I guess we yeah. thought that helped us to relax and, you know, to... to ease up and I, I actually still miss it but uh, I found I, I was actually taking a walk today and I thought I I maybe cured myself I don't I, I don't need that stuff anymore right. yeah I'm not yeah I think in a lot of ways it's kind of like uh, well I'll just speak for myself it was a way to put off doing the work you know mm -hmm. let, you know let me let me have a drink with my friends Well, now I've been drinking, so of course I'm not going to sit down and work on my business. So it, it was kind of a, a, a roundabout way of, you know, I think our brains are always trying to solve problems and they want to solve the problem as quickly as possible. And for creative people, sometimes that quick fix of dopamine is our brain's way of being like, oh, well, we solved this problem. Now, now there's no, that anxiety of, oh, we must create, we must, you know, do something with the time. the the alcohol the the marijuana that can that can turn that little voice off and then we're we're kind of just complacent doing whatever but you're right it it could take decades but eventually it is going to get old and Mm -hmm. um i applaud you both for your commitment that's something I'm, i'm hearing over and over again in this conversation you you've been committed you decided you were going to do something and it didn't matter if you were sick you still went to the gym it didn't matter if you got nostalgic For the cannabis, you still didn't smoke it. So it's really beautiful. I don't think anybody watching this who is wondering if they can do it too, well, this is this is the reality. It can be done. It'll be uncomfortable. Um, but it's like a um, like I was saying at the beginning of our call, the change can happen immediately. It really can. You you can change yourself immediately. It just can take days, weeks, months. for those out of results to start to, to show. But if you commit, 
and then you see those results, then yeah, you forget about all that other stuff you used to do. Because now everything is so much better. Why would you want to go back to, you know, making yourself lazy? <laughs> And I've kind of lost my friends before, but something that you're afraid of when making that change is like, who am I going to hang out with? Because if you're if you're a smoker, you hang out with smokers most of the time. I, yeah, And, for sure. and uh, that's 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 what happened now. I, I I was kind of afraid, and me and my plane have been quite isolated. But mm -hmm. now we found friends on the internet, like you, and in other other communities. And then, like I told you, I signed this manager. Uh, deal today and that guy was just from facebook he like put out an ad he's That's so actually great. been a, a big artist in, in sweden he, he put out an ad like i want to relaunch my, my career and then we started yeah. talking and he said like a lot of his troubles has been linked to alcohol and now he's like really inspired by me not drinking working out he needs like the routines and everything so okay. everything's like melting together really well he he says he want wow. to be like me and That's just a recent change that, wow. that I made, like not nine months ago. And all the discipline I made him, like a, a coaching program, like he, mm. we, have to, we have to start smooth. So he's got to, he has to wake up a certain time and go to bed a certain time. And then when he wakes up, he has to do push ups, five push ups, just to, you know, teach himself to, to do something in the morning and have a glass of water. And then I'm going to, you know, progress. And make it harder for him. Maybe he has to do 10 push-ups next week or something. Yeah. But I think it's about, uh, for us, it's also been steps. It started with, like, like I said, with me doing some push-ups every day. And then, uh, like, when you, do, when you take action, you get more motivated. That's something that I learned from Jim Rohn. When you take action, you get motivated. And you can't sit around and wait for motivation because it's not always going to come. But if you take action and just learn to discipline yourself and, and start, yeah. you should, you know, you get into the energy of like, that. this is this was pretty fun. Let, let's go. Let's continue working. Right. And then you forget time and then you don't remember that you didn't want to, to start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think it's really good to something about journaling is like you also, also talked in your YouTube video about the day the day before or in the night night time write down like some value creating activities like tomorrow i'm going to make this product i'm going to put it on my website and then i'm going to do this because then you wake up with a purpose yeah. and uh, it, it can really help uh, with you know making you come closer to your goal yeah i think when we get it out of our heads and on paper and we're doing it regularly it it keeps that top of mind We have to remind ourselves, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. It's really important. That's why something as simple as uh, a vision board can really help some people. And I, and I think at a very basic level, it's because you're just really focusing on what you're going after. And it's right there where you can see it. And if you're looking at it every day and thinking about it every day, um, it can manifest in your life because you're, you're moving towards it. Just like people who say, I have no money. Bad things always happen to me. Well, it's you know, very simply, they're focused on those negative feedback loops and they get more of that. Exactly. Your mind is like a magnet. It's like magnetizing steel. If you put yeah. in energy to it, it magnetizes what you think about. That's what, what we learned. And, We also learned about this technique from our coach that he's, he's calling touch lightly. If it's something that doesn't, you know, resonate with our goal, we just say, that's interesting, and just focus on our goal instead. Mm. Because that's something that, that will come up. You will have, like, doubts, and you will have people not believing in you. We actually got a lot of hate comments recently. People, you know, commenting, like, poo emojis <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> like vomiting emojis and stuff and it actually happened this week but like i just touched lightly it doesn't it doesn't really bother me because i know i did my best with with these paintings and if they don't like it well it's the best i can do so you know go go look someone at, somewhere else yeah. and they're probably jealous you know they, they wouldn't be <laughs> wasting they wouldn't be wasting the energy if if something in them didn't feel like 
they should be creating themselves, but they're not creating. So they want to discourage. Um, yeah, I think that's a rite of passage. I think, I think that's something that you have to go through once you start producing, whether it's um, your, your business and your art and, and all that, or if it's creating content online, um, that's, once once you really start doing it you're gonna face some of that and it doesn't necessarily feel good but you can choose to just ignore it and not waste any energy on it and just remind yourself this means you're doing the work that this is good this is uh it's just like weird al yankovic you know doing a parody of your song or saturday night live you know making fun of you it's not a bad thing because it, it means like you've arrived <laughs> you know <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I have this friend, Paul, he said, like, that's a good sign. That's a good sign yeah. that you're doing something big, that if, if someone hates it, hate on you, that's that's what I started getting in my success. That's his point of view. Awesome. Yeah. That's so great. That's welcome. You should be happy to get it. Yeah. <laughs> New way of looking, looking at it, because in life, you were so conditioned to fit in and please everyone else and and change ourselves to be the in the way others want us to be. So it's just a natural response, uh, getting, you know, upset when someone give, give you hate comments, but it's just, it's natural. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like you said, I thought when I, when I see, saw those com comments, I thought like, though they, they probably want to paint themselves, but you know, they think they're so good, but they, they've never done anything. So do something. And also it was funny when I, I, I've actually been like an artist and performing on stage and, and stuff and uh, uh, like when when, um, when I when I had a show, it was one of my friends. They were friends with with someone in the that was watching and like they filmed us on stage and you could hear someone say, "They they suck. I can do it so much better." I I heard that because they <laughs> and. Uh, And I just, I'm just thinking, yeah, do it. It's, it's always right. like that. Yeah, do it. Do it yourself. Man. You're just standing there doing nothing and, you know, right. just dreaming. And, yeah. So that it's, it's going to happen. So I'm, I'm a bit used to it too. Well, congratulations on this new gig. It's, um, it really is incredible. Every time I talk to y'all, you've blasted through a new milestone. That's amazing. Um, I see that Shannon has joined us. Thanks for uh, dropping in live. It's cool to have uh, some folks here. If if there's any questions or any comments that anybody wants to add, um, we can definitely do that. Um, where um, where can people find your art, purchase your lifestyle accessories? Exactly, it's Vesano. Dot design. It's both the website and on Instagram. And we're putting out products all the time. We put out some new marble inspired artworks. We try to make your you guys' homes elegant and uh, you know exclusive looking. And marble is quite expensive and it's mm -hmm. hard to put on your walls, but we're putting out some artworks and we're doing coasters with marble patterns and we're always innovating. We have this other collection that we're working on like one one theme of of our art is that we're working a lot of, with animals mm. uh it's cool to to play around with different animals and in different different styles it's like you know, infinite uh possibilities yeah and that's actually something that i want to share that in the beginning in my art journey i've always been kind of stuck in my head I, with art, there's like infinite possibilities. Mm. And that's really something that bothers, bothered me. I thought like, is this right? Is this right? Is this right? But I learned after years that I know what's right. I just have to feel what's right. What I was thinking was, are other people going to think this is right instead mm. of just being unique? So that's something that really helped me to to don't get caught in your head and feel, is this right? Yes, it's right for me right now. Maybe I'm better in one year. Maybe I can do it better, but right now it's the best. Awesome. That's wonderful. That's wonderful.
thank you for stopping in today. Lots, lots of really great value in this conversation. A lot of foundational things that if anyone just focused on identifying their values and committing to that vision and, and implementing the information that they, they learn by investing in themselves, um, it's 110% po possible for folks to leave their nine to five and, and make a living online, working from anywhere in the world, doing um, creative projects that you were put on this earth to do. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Awesome. As soon as this uh, recording processes, I'll, um, I'll drop it in the community with links to your website, which looks great, by the way. And all the, uh, the marketing, your content campaign that you've been rolling out on Instagram looks great. Um, really, really cool. And yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll drop any links in the replay, post it on YouTube. I'll drop it in Wearcat on school. Anything else before we, um, jump off? I know it was a great conversation. Yeah. I I'm happy about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I am too. We'll definitely have to do this again. Um, keep documenting that journey. You have such a great story. And, and like you shared today, um, your story really affected this new client that you've got. Um, and, and they decided to, to go with you, um, largely because of your story in addition to the talent. So just incredible, just incredible. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here today. I'll see y'all in Wearcat on school. And uh, keep doing it, y'all. It's an inspiration. Wonderful. Bye.